Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to Pitch Talk. We are fans of football dropping vlogs, videos and podcasts on the beautiful game. Check out our videos on YouTube and Instagram's IGTV. Including special feature segments, vlogs such as... 5 Minutes with a G. The Straight Shooting View. Coaching with JBK. Audio on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Podomatic, Spotify and other podcast platforms. Join the Pitch Talk revolution on social media Twitter Instagram we have a group and fan page on Facebook the pitch is where we eat the pitch is where we sleep and the pitch is where we talk welcome to the straight shooting view hey what's up people my name is straight shooting LJ and welcome to another episode of the straight shooting view now Ah, it's been a pretty interesting 2020-2021 season, to say the very least. That is an understatement, I know. But one thing I want to talk about is the summer transfer window. 2021 going into 2022 is, I mean, there's already a European Championships coming up. That's going to be interesting enough to see logistically how that how that ends up shaking out. But I'm talking more domestically. Domestically, this transfer window could be one of the most transfer windows, interesting transfer windows in recent memory. Because Project Big Picture and the European Super League. Two instances in six months where a lot of owners of Premier League clubs have burned bridges. And... The six sides that were going to be potentially involved in the European Super League were very quick to come out of it and be like, oh, 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 okay, cool. We're not going to do this. I think it was within like 48 hours. It started dropping like flies. It's like, like, oh, sorry about this. I mean, you've got Ed Woodward, um, who was going to leave anyway. It just kind of moved the timetable up on his departure slightly. Um, Ferran Soriano... Actually, a couple of others, a couple of other guys as well. Tom Werner, a lot of like these guys have left their posts. Bruce Buck um, being another one. These guys have left their posts because of the fallout um, from the European Super League plans. If you want to know that about that in detail, check out my other check out my other vlogs. European Super Leagues and money grabbing hypocrisy, and the following one after it as well. So I won't bore you with the details of that, but. I think it's going to be a very, very interesting close season because a lot of these sides, a lot, of, well, a lot of these owners are, they've got a lot of repairing of damage to do and a lot of damage limitation. You look at Liverpool with FSG, I'll start with them, and it was an absolute disgrace and it's utterly abhorrent as a Liverpool supporter that FSG were involved in this, especially as they've been saying for years, oh, you know what? We're not going to be some, like, we're not going to be some billionaire benefactor. We're going to run the club on the values of the club. We're going to be this. We're going to be that. We're going to bring Liverpool back to prominence. We're going to do all this, which they've done. And they've made a few mistakes before, but it's on them ones where now, especially after how this past season's gone, how it's gone, no matter how it ends up, no matter how it shakes out, it's one of them ones where FSG have got a lot of making up to do with the fans. And I don't think it's going to be one of them ones where, let's take Arsenal, for, um, for instance, who over the past, what, five, six, seven, eight years... Since basically Meza Ozil, so you can say like eight years, because I think he was born in like 2013. And myself and the G Man actually flagged this up at the time. I remember discussing it with him when Ozil was born. I was like, huh, they're going along. Arsenal seem to be going along this pattern of okay, we're gonna buy one marquee player per season to placate the fans. And it seems to work. For a couple of months and then you start getting the dissenting voices again where it's like, oh, it's still not good enough. So 
with the Cronkies and the way they've potentially burned bridges with Arsenal fans, especially with the rumours about um, Daniel Ek of Spotify potentially um, buying them out as well, but the Cronkies saying they're not selling, but then the club being up for sale apparently. It, it's such mixed messages. So to get on side with the fans, there's going to have to be a hell of a lot of money spent by Liverpool and Arsenal first and foremost City and Chelsea, I'm not going to include them because number number one, they're, they're both of their owners don't really care and they've always positioned themselves as ruthless businessmen anyway. Same with the Cronky family, but it's a family you'd think they'd have a bit more morals than that. I'll stick with that. I'll come back to that in a bit. And it's one of them ones where Manchester City and also Chelsea, well, they're known for spending shed loads of money anyway. Chelsea, after the transfer ban, basically just reverted to type. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, oh, okay, we can spend a load of money again. Right, let's do it. <laughs> Even though promoting from within that actually wasn't working half bad for her. But it's one of them, obviously, Tottenham, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea. There's a lot of work to be done building bridges back with the fans again and building that trust back. But the one club that is probably going to have the most interesting transfer window out of the lot of them, whether they win the Europa League or not, I think is Manchester United. Because you look at the fan protest that happened before the Manchester United-Liverpool game on May 1st of 2021... And you see that that level of vitriol that we haven't seen in about 11 years since the Newton Heath thing. And it's one of them where it's like, that makes things very, very interesting because people, a lot of people are speculating, oh, well, the Glazers is going to sell up, are they going to sell up? And it's like, well, no, of course they're not. They've got so much money. They've got so much sunk into that club. They're, they're dug in like ticks. And it's one of them was they're creaming off and they have creamed off so much from the club, financially, it just wouldn't make sense for them to go anywhere. Unless they were offered like 8 billion, like from some Qatari sheikh, can't see the Glazers going. And I can't see anyone offering that much anyway, not in this climate. But these clubs, and I said, especially the Glazers, it's one of them ones. That this summer is going to be very, very interesting because these these owners, if they really do want to curry favour back with the fans and rebuild some of that trust, the quickest way to do it, sadly, because a lot of fans are fickle, is to buy a shed load of players and start winning a shed load of trophies. That's That's the way to do it, to be perfectly frank. I mean, as much as Manchester City fans were not happy with Man City's inv potential involvement in the European Super League, they're not going to turn around and say, oh, um, sh oh what's it, what's it? Um, no, we don't want the shakes in anymore. We don't want them part of our club anymore. Because you look at what they've invested. You go, what they've invested um, in Carrington, in youth facilities. Look at what they've invested in the women's side. Look at what they've invested in the first team side whilst they've been there. No, it's gonna, it would be massively hypocritical to say, no, we want you out now because they've brought them to where they are. So it's one, it's, it's one of them. It's going to be, I think it's going to be an extremely interesting summer for a number of sides whose owners are trying to basically curry favour with, with the fan bases again. And you can't rebuild that trust. That's gone. But at the same time, if you've got one, say, billion, say billionaire owner, that like, you, you want one of them out, like Arsenal fans want in the Cronkies out, well, who's going to replace them? If you think they're ruthless business people, look into Daniel Ek and what he said on and what he said over the past year in regards to um, musicians on Spotify and earning money on that platform, and look at how he's fleecing pretty much everybody apart from the top one percent. And tell me he's not cut from the same cloth as the Cronkies. So it's one of them where I, I mean, I said, I'm not going to sit here and say FSG out. I opened up one of my vlogs by saying, thank you very much, FSG, for all the success you've brought to the club over the decade that you've been here. But screw you for the European Super League involvement because that was a disgrace. And that's how that's honestly how I feel about it. 
but at the end of the day, I, I mean, I personally look at look at modern modern football somewhat jaded, and the European Super League that's an inevitability, I think. But again, I dived into that. I did a deep dive in another vlog on that. But it's one of them where it's where it's like there was there are so many hypocrites coming out and saying, oh, oh, these owners need to go, these owners need to sell up. Why? From a business perspective, all of those owners have never made more money from one particular venture. So why are they going to sell up? Economically, it doesn't make sense. And anybody who says, oh, these owners need to sell up and stuff like that, you clearly don't understand business. So for me, when I watch a football match, I'm, I have to put that out of my mind. I have to put out of my mind the business side of the game. I love talking about it. But whilst I'm like involved in that 90 minutes, I'm not thinking about the business side of the game because it would just bring, it would just make me think, you know what? I can't watch this. The business practices in the game, in the modern game, corruption, all of that. But I can't watch it. It's no. So as I said, coming back, it, I said it is going to be a very, very interesting summer for a number of teams. And I would like to give a shout out to my younger brother who actually inspired this vlog as well. Um, because we because we were talking about transfers and I've, talked, I've spoken to a number of other people about transfers as well, where it's a case of, as I said, a lot of teams have got catching up to do. Everybody's catching back up to Man City again. Liverpool haven't had the greatest season, but it's one of them ones we've got a lot of deadwood to get rid of. But... I said the vitriol from a lot of fans means that these owners have got a lot of repairing of bridges to do. And I said the quickest way to repair, repair bridges with fans is to spend a load of money. Will these owners do it? I don't know. I really don't. I, I could see the Glazers spending a little bit, but not much. I know Joel Glazer wants to have meetings with, with the fans' trusts and all that, but... You don't know how well those kind of meetings are going to go. Um, I know Spirit of Shankly were not happy. I know, what's it, the Man United Supporters Trust, they weren't happy as well. So, I, I mean, I can understand it. I totally understand it. I think it was a disgrace the way those six sides tried to break away and do the European Super League gimmick. But then you've got UEFA, who have expanded the champion, who are going to expand the Champions League. And it's like, well, that's essentially the same thing as the Super League. So I said, you have to put so much out of your mind. It's a case of, I want to know your views. Comment section is below. After the Super League fiasco, can you trust your owners again? If, the, if your owners spent a shed load of money, four, five, six hundred million, hypothetically, and brought in a bunch of players and won, and won a couple of trophies... Would that change your mind about those owners or would you still feel the same way as you did when you thought that your side were going to take part in the European Super League and potentially destroy English football as we knew it? I would love to know. I would love to know. You know what? Comment section is below. Remember, youtube.com forward slash pitch talk is where you can see all of our videos, including yours truly on the straight shoot in view, coaching with JBK, five minutes with the G, and our special feature vlogs and videos as well. At pitch talk on Twitter, tweet with us, follow us, see what we are up to. At pitch talk on Instagram, see our videos on IGTV, facebook.com forward slash pitch talk, become a fan, become a friend, become a member of the group, join the football and revolution. We are working so hard to create we've got podcasts we've got audio apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify podomatic podbean verbal v-u-r-b-l player fm amazon music these are we're on all of those outlets have a look for the pitch talk podcast on all of those as well to catch audio versions of what we do i have been straight shooting lja comment section is below i'd like to know your views do you think especially with the top six that tried to break away to form a well to be part of and founding members of the european super league how interesting is the 2021 going into the 2021 2022 season summer how interesting is that going to be not even counting the european championships 
How interesting will it be? Will there be a lot of moving and schmoozing? Or will it just be digging in the heels from the owners? I have been Straight Shooting LJ, and until next time, thank you for joining me on the Straight Shooting View. Take it easy. Join the Pitch Talk Revolution on social media, dropping vlogs, videos, and podcasts on the beautiful game.